Okay, welcome to my first review of Photoshop CS5. It became available for download last night from the good folks over at Adobe. And I have an image open here in Photoshop CS5 after I've made some edits to it. I'm not going to go through all the edits that I did to get here, but I will say I got to this result in a mere matter of seconds rather than minutes. I could do so much more in Camera Raw that I used to not be able to do. I did literally no editing once I opened the image. That's how cool CS5 is. What I'm going to show you is how to do the configurations and some things to watch out for when you first download it. I'm on my Mac right now, so on your Mac you want to go to Photoshop Preferences. If you're doing this on Windows, you're going to want to go to Edit and there will be a Preferences option down here. But since I'm on the Mac, I'm going to go to Photoshop Preferences and I'm going to open General. And the very first thing that I change is I change my image interpolation and I uh, switch that over to Bicubic Sharper. And then the other thing I also do is I zoom with a scroll wheel because I have a scroll wheel on a mouse when I have that attached and I want to be able to zoom in and out with that. So that's the first change I make. The next change that I make is I change the font size in here to large. And I like the way CS5 has these drop shadow borders, so I'm going to go ahead and leave those. And in the next setting, I want to prefer to use Camera Raw. And I want to always append the file extension, and I want to save my image previews. And then down here, I also uh, switched it so that it will always maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. Next up in the preferences settings, I actually think I left everything alone in here. The history states is pretty cool because you can add history states by default. It's at 20, and it goes up to, I believe, 1,000 is the high end. Yeah, 1,000 is a high end, but I don't never really do that many edits, so I just change my history state to 50. I don't do a lot more of my editing in Photoshop anymore, but when I do, I want to keep it all, so I just change the history state there. And then in the next setting down, I change my painting cursor to the full-size brush, and I show the crosshair in the brush tip. Uh, next up is the transparency. I change the grid size to small. Uh, by default, it's on medium, and you'll see the difference over here where it's a larger size. I like the smaller grid size myself, and I like to keep it on the light setting. Under the units and rulers, I leave that alone. Under grids, guides, and slices, though, is where the most important thing is for me anyway. I change it to a custom color grid. I have a grid line every 33.3% with only one subdivision, and that's what will give me a rule of thirds overlay when I highlight the grids. Uh, for plugins, I've specified my additional plugins folder and I've left the other settings on their default. And then the last thing I change in here is the font preview size and I switch that to large just because that is easier on my eyes. Then you want to click OK and that will be applied the next time you restart Photoshop. The third thing I do is I will go into the curves dialog menu and if you press the alter option key, you can switch between this larger grid and the smaller grid and that will give you more precise control when you do make curves adjustments settings inside of Photoshop. Clearly I've not made any adjustment settings because I can toggle this off or on and you see there have been no changes made. But I wanted to bring up that dialog box and make that change so that it's there the next time I go to use it. So those are pre the predominant changes that I make whenever I do a new install of Photoshop and it's no different here with Photoshop CS5. Uh, that's it for the initial preview. I'll include screen captures of each of these steps on the blog post so you can see everything in more detail. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here at Learning Digital Photography.